Most people have never seen an image of the deity Yah called Yao, and Yah, his name is spelled different ways in ancient Kemet. This is the moon divinity, the masculine moon divinity. And that's his title. So when people start talking about Yahweh and all that nonsense, this is where they stole the name of the deity from. This is where they took it from originally and then tried to add some foolish cosmology associated with Yahweh choosing the fictional character, you know, cartoon character, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> group of people, the Hebrews and so forth, and saying there is chosen people. But this is the divinity, the masculine spirit that is animating the moon right now. And there's also Ya'et, which is the feminine force that animates the moon. But the uh, masculine force, since we're talking about this particular divinity, that's the force animating the moon right now. Always has been. Now, in the Medutu, these are a number of different spellings of the name Yah, also Yao, and so forth. So when you see the A, which is the reed right here, the flowering reed, the arm, forearm with the open palm facing upward, and then the twisted flax. So that's A, but also A, ah, but, but it can also be E. Eh. Then you have the forearm, which is the A ah sound. And then the twisted flax is the H sound, H sound, which is Ya. And if it's pronounced A, ah, then it's A. Ah, but if, if it's pronounced E eh, in certain dialects, it's E. Eh, and ah, when we put eh and ah together, ea, 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 this is where you get ya from. When you say ya, the y, the y sound is not just one sound, it's a combination of eh and ah, ea, ea, and this is where you get the ya sound from. So the determinative symbol is one of the phases of the moon. So this is another spelling of it with the phase of the moon the determinative symbol perpendicular, another image of that and so forth, a number of different spellings of the name Ia. Then you have also, just so you can see that, when you see the reed and the uh, forearm and the twisted flax and the addition of the chick, the little bird, that is the U or W. U and W are interchangeable. So in earlier texts, they would use the U, and later texts, they would use the W. That's interchangeable in English. It's interchangeable in European languages. It's interchangeable in ancient Afurakani, Afurakani languages. So you look at the V about 1,500 years ago, evolved into the U as a character. And then the U about 500 years later, evolved into the W, which is two U's side by side, W, or two V's side by side. V and V together is a double U. So V, U, and W is the same root, the same character. So this is why V and W are interchangeable. In European languages, you have Sweden, SW, Sweden, SV, William in certain European dialects, William or Wilhelm and others. But you also have in uh, Namibia and Angola, you have the Ovambo people. Ovambo, O-V-A, Ambo, Ovambo, but some of them pronounce it Ovambo with the W. You have the Eve people in Togo and Benin and so forth in Ghana. Some of them pronounce it Eve with the V. It's also spelled E-W-E, Ewe, and so forth. So the V and W sound interchange. So this is Ya plus the W or the U is Yao, Yao, and that's where that comes from. So that's why you have both spellings. You have the I, A, H, Ya, but you have the I, A, H, N, W, or U, Yao, Yao, and you have that. In the Coptic dialect, the late period dialect of the uh, Kometi language that came into use about 2,000 years ago at the end of the dynastic period, you see the way they spelled it, hold on a second.
You see the way they spelled it in Coptic, and it's the I sound, O and H, yo, yo. And then you have yo, which is also jo, jo. And then you have I, O, I, H, yo, ye, or yo, e, and so forth. So that's the way in the Coptic dialect you see it spelled. So you have Ea, Me, Uchat, um, the full moon. <clears throat> and then you have Ya, Hera, Set, the moon and noon, the southern Ya, and so forth. And then you have Ya, Tuhuti. So you have, you have the Ya spelling, the moon, and so forth. And then the divinity, Tuhuti. That is Tuhuti as a spirit, the divinity of divine wisdom, when that spirit possesses the moon, spirit possession, possesses the moon and then uses the moon to transmit his spiritual energy, then Tuhuti is called Ya Tuhuti, but he's also called Yao Tuhuti, Yao Tuhuti. Now, here's an example of Yao Tuhuti. This is Tuhuti, the divinity of divine wisdom, and he has the moon on his head. That's when Tuhuti is possessing the moon. But then you also have Tuhuti here, this papyrus of Hunefer. And this is just Tuhuti is not possessing the moon at this point. He's not Ya Tuhuti or Yao Tuhuti in this context. He's the divinity Tuhuti. When he possesses the moon, he is Yao Tuhuti. Now, so let's look at what they have to say about Yahweh first and then show how they stole the information. When you look at a text, and we're going to show some of these references, when you look at Wikipedia, for example, some people say, well, you shouldn't use Wikipedia for research. Wikipedia is just an aggregate of information. They give basic information, but then they direct you to the, re the, the um, um, sources, and then you can investigate the sources yourself. They give the basic narrative, but then, of course, they source it. Now, you can source it, and you can see whether or not the sources are accurate or not, but they give a basic, um, you know, the same basic understanding that you'll find in any text. They'll give them Wikipedia, but then you go to the sources and pull up the sources and the world will show that. So some fools will be like, well, you, you can't say that the Hebrews don't exist because you can't prove that by using Wikipedia. That's just stupid because we're not using Wikipedia to prove it. It's just giving you a background. So they'll say Yahweh is the national God of ancient Israel and Judah. The origins of his worship reach at least to the early Iron Age and likely to the late Bronze Age, if not somewhat earlier. And in the oldest biblical literature, he possesses attributes typically ascribed to weather and war deities and so forth. The early Israelites were polytheistic and worshiped Yahweh alongside of a variety of Canaanite gods and goddesses, including El, Asherah, and uh, Baal. It talks about Yahweh was originally described as one of the sons of El in Deuteronomy but this was removed by a later emendation to the text. So, let's click on that. So they talk about Yahweh being the one God and so forth, but in Deuteronomy, he's one of the sons, one of the many sons of the deity El. Later on, when Europeans continued to corrupt the text, they start saying that Yahweh and El is the same entity. In reality, El, which is the great divinity, El Gabal, the old man of the mountain and so forth is Ra. And then Yao, or Yahweh or Yao, Yahweh is a corruption of Yao, which is Tuhuti, the moon divinity. And El, which is Ur, is the great sun divinity that is Ra and Tuhuti. As we talked about in the book of um, the uh, great cow of heaven and so forth, Ra's on the mountain, Tuhuti goes up into the mountain to receive that illumination as the moon divinity. He gets filled up with that illumination. And now Ra says, you will be on my, um, in my place on earth and people need to follow you 
in order to get to me. That's Ra and Tuhuti, the sun and the moon, operating through the sun and the moon. In Kanana, it's El or El Gabal, the great divinity of the mountain. And then Yah or Yahweh with this heavenly host of stars and so forth, he goes up to meet, you know, the divinity. So in Deuteronomy, um, El is the chief divinity. Yahweh is one of the sons of El. Then later on, they conflated the two. Now, so when they talk about his name is not attested among the other, um, other than among the Israelites and seems not to have any plausible etymology, that Eye, I said, Eye, I am that I am, the explanation presented in Exodus, appearing to be a late theological gloss invented at a time when the original meaning had been forgotten and so forth. When you read in the biblical text, um, Yahweh is saying, well, my name is Yahweh. You're going to call me Yahweh from this point on. Prior to that, your fathers didn't know me as Yahweh. They knew me as El Shaddai and so forth. But from this point on, you're going to know me as Yahweh. When they're talking about Moses goes and sees the deity in the burning bush, he says, what is your name? And my name is Yahweh and all of that. And your forefathers didn't know me as Yahweh and all of that. So they're stating basically that prior to that little Moses era, 1200, 1250 BCE and so forth, around that particular time, um, nobody knew the divinity as quote unquote Yahweh. And this is the first time this divinity is being introduced because your forefathers didn't know me as Yahweh and all this other nonsense. So that's 1200 even if you want to say 1300 BCE, even if you want to see, say 1400 BCE, but that, that predates the whole fictional Moses character. But in that time period, in the little biblical text, they'll say, nobody knew my name is Yahweh. Your forefathers didn't know that. You're going to start calling me that from this point on. Now let's look in ancient Kemet and see what's going on with that. So there's a particular um, article that we want to touch on. The moon god Yah in ancient Egyptian religion. And we can send you the link for this particular study. And we're not going to go through the whole thing. We just There's just a couple of things we want to point out. So they're talking about how the moon god Yah is kind of overshadowed by the solar divinity. But what's important about this is when they reference the first mentions in the pyramid text, the Meru text of the divinity Yah as a lunar divinity. The pyramid text going back to 2600 so-called BCE. So when they're talking about in the biblical time and Moses and during the time when the treasury cities of Pithom and Ramses are, you know, exist 1200, between 1200 and 1300 BC and so forth, during that time period, and Yahweh is first introduced as a divinity to them. This is what they're saying in the text. When archaeologists come later, they realize it's all fraudulent. That's not the first time you hear of a Yah or Yao divinity. If that's 1200, 1300 BCE, if you go a thousand years before that, in fact, 1300 years before that, the Meru text, the pyramid text, the first, the earliest religious compositions in the world, you find that the divinity Yah or Yao is already incorporated fully in ritual. 1300 years prior. So that's the end of the little Yahweh being introduced as a divinity. Now, The moon god as a divinity, some of the features of Yah endure through time while others change. In the pyramid text, the deceased king is related to Yah through kinship ties, and the references to the celestial body are connected with his monthly cycle. In the coffin text and the Book of the Dead, his rebirth cycle and the light which the deceased um, aspires to join prevail. So in the pyramid text, Yah is mentioned on three different occasions. 
Two of those describe him as a deity with close family ties. Close family ties to the dead king as his father, <clears throat> as his father, he, and this is the text itself, he, meaning Heru on the horizon, shall commend Pepi to his father. Pepi was the king, the pair of the pharaoh and so forth, but this particular pyramid text, this pyramid was his. So he, meaning horse on the horizon, shall commend Pepi, the pair of the pharaoh, to his father, Yah, the moon, the moon dead. Pepi's sibling is the morning star god. So his father is the moon, his sibling is the morning star god. And then you see the actual text, pyramid text 507, and then also 1104A to B. And his brother, Yah, the moon divinity, is the brother of the pair uh, or the pharaoh Pepi. And the morning star god is the sibling of Pepi. And so they have the text, and it's pyramid text 481, also 1001B. The sentence constructed as a pu clause emphasizes the equation, the straight identification between the two beings. The third passage wishes that the deceased would be able to emulate the moon god in his monthly rebirth. You shall be born at your months like Yah, like the moon divinity. Now, so when we look at the pyramid text and when we visit ancient command, we go into the pyramids and you can, we've taken photos of the text themselves, like in the pyramid of Teti and so forth, the mayor of Teti, we go inside and so forth and you can, we've taken pictures and video of the text themselves. And then we have the primary source that when we come back and look at this literature and so forth to see if they actually copy the you know text down faithfully, we can show the um, side-by-side -side comparisons. So in the earliest text, 1300 years before the so-called fictional Moses character says Yahweh first introduced himself. 1300 years before that, Yah is already fully incorporated in ritual in the cosmology. Now, and of course, this is his iconography. 